Bully News today, Education Minister proposes National Remembrance Day in school calendar. Status update on Solomon Island students who have had scholarships in the Philippines. Singing festivals and choir competitions highlight in Honiara over the weekend. Commemorating World War II and work of Solomon Island Scouts in Honiara this August. And later in sports, FIFA president to visit Honiara next week. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Osifello. The Education Minister, Ms. Lanel Tanangada, has suggested the inclusion of a National Remembrance Day in the school calendar. This proposal aims to encourage learning from the country's historical events. Ms. Tanangana made the remarks during a parliamentary session while discussing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. I would like to recommend to this Parliament House that it considers a national day for truth and reconciliation to be included in the school calendar. It is a day in which all young, forward-looking Solomon Islanders should commemorate the importance of peace and peace-building initiatives and to avoid conflict and tensions. It should be a day to honor the resilience, dignity, and strength of peace-loving citizens and survivors of violence of all forms and to appeal to everyone, including themselves, never to repeat what happened during the ethnic tension or any conflict they may have experienced. At the same time, the Education Minister also explained the status of Solomon Island students studying in the Philippines. In response to this question by MP for Ranonga Simbo, Mr. Charles Sigoto. Can the Minister inform Parliament on the status of the Solomon Islands Philippine students who have returned in 2020 and are ready to complete their studies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resources. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and we like to say thank you to the member for Ranung and Simbo. Um, in response to the question, uh, I'm delighted to inform Parliament that the Ministry of Education and Human Resources Development through CITESA has made arrangements for Alamota Sikh funded students to return to the universities in the Philippines. Mr. Speaker, sir, you would recall that um, we did bring these students, they were forcefully repatriated home during the COVID-19 pandemic. 58 students are ready to leave for the Philippines universities before the end of this month. These are students who have been between one to three years before the survey completing studies or qualifications Loketa. These courses, um, these students will pursue are offered on a face-to-face -face mode. Therefore, we need to send them back to the universities. They have to be physically present at the universities in the Philippines where they will be studying at. 130 students will undertake the remaining courses online. All of their remaining courses are offered online. Therefore, these students do not need to travel back to the Philippines, but to remain in Honiara to complete their courses. These students have one to three semesters to go before they complete their studies or qualifications. Few of them, Mr. Speaker, have found jobs and are working and have decided to do their courses online. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Finance and Treasury, Makini Dentana, has reaffirmed the Ministry's commitment to maintaining macro-physical stability and discipline. Dentana made this statement in light of questions on the government's finances. As responsible ministry, we must remain vigilant and responsible to maintain macro-physical stability and discipline. Hard decisions have to be made in the face of adversity and ensure we build our fiscal resilience given the uh, uncertainty, including uncertainty in terms of natural disasters such as cyclone, earthquake, uh, becoming unpredictable during our time today. Finally, I, I wish to assure our stakeholders out there that our government, through my ministry, are committed 
and put in place measures to ensure that financing of key policies and commitments are secured and prioritized and all obligations are met before the end of this year so that we can go into Christmas and New Year 2023 celebration, a joyful, memorable and blessed season. The U.S. Ambassador to Australia, Caroline Kennedy, has expressed Washington's readiness to provide substantial financial support to Solomon Islands. However, the funds are pending approval from the Solomon Islands government. Caroline Kennedy, daughter of the late U.S. President John F. Kennedy, conveyed this message during an interview with ABC's Christian Rita Amanu Leong. Well, the United States is eager to sign a sort of a comprehensive development assistance agreement. Um, USAID administrator has made that really clear, so we're just waiting for the Solomon Islands to um, agree. We have, um, we have a lot of infrastructure funding that could be deployed here, hundreds of millions of dollars. So we're really waiting. We've made a number of, we've offered a number of, of programs, um, Peace Corps development assistance, climate change assistance. We are working um, in different provinces on climate change, sustainable farming. I met with women who are um, harvesting in a sustainable way and, and using that to uh, support their families, to help educate their children. It's being funded by the United States. So we're here to listen. We have offered um, a number of initiatives in response to what we've heard from the community, but I think that's the way the United States, we want to find out what the Solomon Islands really wants and needs, and then we would like to meet those needs and help people um, improve their lives in the future of this country so that we can all work together. Starting October 2nd, Solomon Airlines will increase its flight frequency between Brisbane and Honiara to five days a week. Gina Kekea has more. Solomon Airlines is set to expand its services between Australia and the Solomon Islands with the recent addition of a second international aircraft. This move is in direct response to the growing demand from Malaysia travellers. To meet this demand, the airline plans to reintroduce direct flights from Brisbane to Munda in the Western Province. Gus Kraus, CEO of Solomon Airlines, emphasized the strategic timing of this expansion, noting the upcoming Pacific Games and the overall improvement in the country's aviation infrastructure. Notably, the Munda International Airport Terminal, set to be completed in September, has generated considerable excitement within the airline. Before the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, Solomon Airlines had successfully launched direct international flights from Brisbane to Munda in 2019, significantly boosting tourism to the Western province. In addition to these efforts, the airline will introduce new domestic connections to destinations like Gizo, Sege and Suavanao. CEO Kraus underscored that these developments in tandem with the country's enhanced aviation infrastructure are set to generate enduring economic advantages for the Solomon Islands and beyond. Alongside the increase to five weekly flights between Solomon Islands and Brisbane, the airline has also adjusted the departure time for its Honera to Auckland flight via Port Vila, moving the takeoff time to 9 a.m. These changes are designed to cater more effectively to the needs of travellers. Reporting for Tavali News, I'm Gina Kekea. Today, Monday, 7th of August 2023, marks 81 years since the US and its allies touched down on Goro Canal, kick-starting a pivotal moment in World War II. The Pacific's first major Allied offensive. In the tribute to this day, a memorial service was hosted by the U.S. Embassy at the Skyline U.S. War Memorial following the early morning service program at the Commonwealth Street. The Solomon Islands Scouts and Coast Guards organized a heartfelt program to honor the courage of Solomon Islands Scouts and Coast Watchers who stood strong during those trying times some 80 years ago. The legacy of these brave soldiers and scouts does not lie only in the past. It carries forward into the present and the future. As we face new challenges, whether they are, whether they are political, social, or environmental, let us remember the courage of those who stood before us, 
they faced a seemingly insurmountable foe, yet they did not waver. In doing so, they left us a precious legacy, a legacy that shows us the strength that comes from unity, the courage that comes from conviction, and the respect that comes from understanding and acknowledging the shared humanity in each of us. May the memory of their sacrifice continue to inspire us, teaching us that we are capable of far more than we think when we stand together. And may we always remember that it is in the hardest moments that true courage shines, providing a beacon of hope for those who follow. In honor of World War II, the daughter and grandson of the late U.S. President, John F. Kennedy, reenacted his heroic swim from Naru Island to Olasana Island. This act saved himself and his PT-109 crew members during the war. Ambassador Kennedy and her son Jack expressed gratitude for the crucial role Solomon Scouts played in their father's survival, which ultimately led to his becoming the President of the United States of America. The swim was pretty difficult, I will say that. And so I have a lot of appreciation and admiration for what my grandfather did and the perseverance it must have taken to survive. At the same time, in the Western province, the same region where the Kennedys reacted their late father and grandfather's swim, a tragic incident unfolded. A group of travelers was en route from Gizo to Kolombangara on Friday when their fiberglass boat capsized. Amongst the seven passengers aboard, one casualty has been confirmed. Three individuals remain missing and four managed to survive the ordeal. The weather office continues to issue warnings about strong winds, urging sea travelers to be cautious due to the prevailing adverse weather conditions in the country. Honiara has been a festival hub lately, celebrating culture, music and not to mention choir singing. Last week, Naha Wesley United Church in Honiara hosted a singing festival, uniting choirs from Western Choisel and Honiara. This event also featured a bazaar aiding Naha Church's new building construction. The festival culminated with praises from participating choirs. Marovo is set to host the next Wesley United Singing Festival in 2025, continuing this melodious tradition. Another singing event, the Naha Regal Choir emerged triumphant in the inaugural Sing Above Yourself Choir Competition organized by Dreamcast Theatre Solomon Islands. The choir competition is the first of its kind. Georgina Kikia has this report. The Naha Regal Choir has not only secured a substantial $15,000 cash prize, but also an exclusive recording deal and the opportunity to create a music video highlighting their outstanding performance. The choral competition orchestrated by Dreamcast Theatre Solomon Islands reached its exhilarating conclusion on Sunday evening. In a thrilling musical face-off at the Dreamcast Arts Hub, the Naha Regal Choir alongside the Central Islands Province Choir and the K2 Family Choir emerged as the top three finalists from an initial pool of 23 contenders. An impartial panel of judges, Jonathan Auna, Sherry Komasi and Alfred Saba, evaluated their performances. The run-ups, the Central Islands Province Choir and the K2 Family Choir walked away with generous cash prizes of $3,000 and $2,000 respectively. <laughs> the Say Choir competition is fully funded by Dreamcast Theatre as part of its Art of Giving advocacy program. Gina Kekia, Tabuli News.
welcome back in tavoli sports fifa president infantino is set to create history with his inaugural visit to solomon islands on august 14th this event marks his first time in the country where football holds deep national significance during his short stay in the capital infantino will witness the solomon power yumi under 14 championship pay a courtesy visit to the Prime Minister and take part in an exciting match between the FIFA President's 11 and the SIF's President's 11 at the iconic Lawson Tama Stadium. The day will conclude with an official dinner at Coral Seas Resort. This visit is said to be a testament to Infantino's commitment to engaging with member associations across the Oceania region. It follows his attendance at FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 matches in Aotearoa, New Zealand, providing him a first-hand look at the crucial projects supported by FIFA Forward, which are vital for football development in the region. SIF President Donald Marahare has confirmed Infantino's visit and preparations are now in full swing to welcome the football leader. The government is also eagerly anticipating this historic occasion. The Games Organising Committee's Sports Delivery Manager has responded to the escalating concerns surrounding the national football pitch's failure to meet FIFA standards. A significant amount of discussions has emerged on various social media platforms regarding the adequacy of the pitch for accommodating FIFA sanctioned matches at the stadium. This discussion him about him now, uh, the national stadium, low context of multi-sport uh, event. Yeah, so low national uh, stadium, believe me, you will put in three for the sport now, but play low that's uh, rugby seven, rugby seven, rugby nine, and football. So, Ogata quite cautious law how Ogata uh, work law, I mean Ogata Mifala work law the measurement and specification. But I'm not really going to detail on that one because that's for them, Ogata International Federation. But all me like for uh, the Thailand public is that so far, uh, rugby seven and rugby nine, Ogata certified now uh, that for affiliate for play not to do a sport here. Football is coming, and come the end of month or the beginning of September, but then come for certified. The discussion and the, all the preliminary discussion have already done. And by what come or certified, then three for a sport here by playing in the national stadium. Specification, as me tell him, the context of discussion, and me fella engage with him over the International Federation, the yeah? context of three for a sport now by law there. Unless he one for a sport celebrity now, then LOC or that particular game yeah, will have to engage with that particular sport for talk about him or other specification. But for the Pacific Games, every specific uh, specification where me for need him for what certify me, yeah, what certify finish. So yes, uh, this for the national stadium yeah, for the multi-sport uh, delivery blue you mean, every international federation where I play inside there, yeah, that's the three sport where me tell him, yeah. By play everyone inside or by certified. What's it? Two certified, one by him come certified. The Solomon's Kurukuru team is fully prepared for their upcoming match in the Continental Futsal Championship. They are scheduled to, to kick off their campaign at 11 p.m. local time on Tuesday, facing off against Manama in the championship opener. Ahead of the team's Tuesday night fixture, head coach Damon Shaw addressed the media in a press conference in Bangkok. So this tournament's arriving just two months before our qualifiers, which we've been preparing for all year. So this represents a really good, a really good test for us. Um, every every month we've been playing games, and the levels we getting higher and higher. So we're here to test ourselves against some top nations and finalise our preparations for our qualifiers in Oceania in, in October. So we're coming here with the aim to compete. Um, we know the level of the teams we're facing, but you know, we're at a stage in our season now where we want to compete in every game. And from there, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But we're, we're here to show the world of Solomon Islands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the other sense, for Solomon Islands, what do you think about two, team in, two big teams in Asia? It's, it's a really good, really good test for us because we, we played Thailand in the last World Cup. 
and it will be a good measure of our progress as to where we've come in the last two years. We hope to improve. Um, we know that Asia is very strong and it's also fairly close to Solomon Island. So we came to Vietnam in, in May. Uh, we played a couple of games in Vietnam and again, we know the level's very high now. So it's been a choice for us to come to, come to Asia as much as possible this year. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to facing two, two Asian teams. We know the level in Asia is, is improving and improving and, um, and we want to improve in Solomon Islands. And, our last preparations for our qualifiers and of course playing against two top coaches that I've followed for a long time as well is a nice honour and um, we can hopefully show if what's on our time. And this has been our Tavuli News Bulletin for this Monday. You have an interesting story to tell or an event worth covering. Send us an email. That's newsdesk at tavulinews.com.sb. I'm Lisa Ossifello. Thanks for staying with us.